My name is James Holder, and I co-founded a clothing brand called Superdry with Julian Dunkerton. I'm a design obsessive. Alongside Julian, I created some of the most iconic designs in the brand's history at a time when Superdry established itself as one of the hottest brands on the planet. I am not a social media person in any capacity, but I figured this was a way to illustrate the simplicity and effectiveness of the founding product formula that fueled the early stage of Superdry's journey. Some seriously cool things happened in the early growth years at Superdry that hopefully hold some relevance today. As Superdry is a PLC, I have to say, apart from being a shareholder, I have zero involvement with Superdry in any capacity, and I have no visibility of anything Superdry does until the same point as the rest of the shareholders. I am seeing this through a shareholder and customer's eyes. My observations are pure product and based on Superdry PLC announcements, published performance, competitor analysis. I'm an individual of limited skill, with my only area of expertise being able to design product and predict trend. I am literally useless at anything else and have some very impressive mistakes under my belt. But with product being the catalyst at the heart of Superdry and with a history of creating some of its most iconic designs, I feel I'm pretty well positioned to make personal observations from a product perspective. This video has been inspired by the newly announced return to its roots approach Superdry has taken to the wholesale model and how it's reverting to a formula that originally drove international growth and it combines cool products with entrepreneurial expertise. And also from a product perspective, now all shareholders, including myself, have had visibility of the products and categories that are performing well for Superdry as stated in the latest annual report. If the simplicity and the effectiveness of the founding product formula is blended with the design excellence and performance that has been delivered across their successful product categories, Superdry could deliver the same level of coolness across other products. Superdry's original product formula was built on a design foundation of two clearly defined languages. It had a mainline collection that offered dynamic, affordable alternatives to the best performing premium products at the time, and an innovation arm that predicted future trend to ensure Superdry had equivalent products in the market at the same time as trend peak. The speed and simplicity of this design model was one of the secrets to its original success. The mainline collection was vintage inspired, reflecting the overwhelming international look at the time. And this generated the bulk of the performance. Superdry mainline was delivered with an obsessional attention to detail to ensure that the product was best in class with the goal of being leagues ahead of the competition. Every mainline product was executed to millimeter perfection with Julian obsessing over every stitch, fabric, hand feel and fit. We would apply Steve Jobs' levels of obsession to high-volume moneymaker categories like polos, shirts, and t-shirts. Julian would obsess over neck ribs and button plackets on polo shirts like a man possessed, and the performance that flowed across core categories came as a direct result of this approach. Superdry had a relentless mindset of constantly trying to achieve perfect product, and the success and hype came as a byproduct of that unique approach. It shone like a beacon of originality in the global mainstream sector, and had a tribe-like following within fashion. With the Superdry innovation piece, although generating revenue through individual products as opposed to full collections, it was an equally important element that delivered a vision of the future and created new icons for the brand. As Superdry demonstrated on numerous occasions, the power of individual products that tap into the global market with a genuine credibility weren't to be underestimated. Designed well, single products have the ability to capture international attention and deliver eye-watering performance for brands over prolonged periods. See North Face with the Nupsi and Nike with the Dunk. This, at the time, unique combination of heritage and innovation product languages gave the international mainstream customer the product they wanted an accessible price and the trend-led customer more complex designs that gave a vision of the future and showed that Superdry was tuned into the latest looks. As a product formula comparison, this heritage plus innovation formula is exactly the same language that propelled Louis Vuitton to stratospheric success under the genius creative direction of Virgil Abloh. With Virgil Abloh's streetwear energy injected, Louis had a core customer buying heritage monogram product and a younger customer buying streetwear inspired product. I am sure comparing Superdry to Louis Vuitton sounds completely insane, but in their respective fashion fields at their respective moments in time, it is this dichotomy of languages that created successful performance. 
As Superdry has shown since 2003, when it designs a category well, it resonates internationally with its target customer, as has been demonstrated by the recently announced performance of outerwear and the notoriously hard to crack teen female category. As the whole world is about to start wearing puffers this winter, the news that Superdry is improving its outerwear offer for 2024 shows an understanding of the global customer. The other factor that Superdry has now that did not even exist during its original growth is social media. Thanks to the immediacy of social media, the customer is looking for constant digital stimulation and the hottest product. If something is hot, they want it and they want it now. 20 years ago, you had to physically trawl the streets of Tokyo, Seoul and LA to find the latest trend and the hottest product. Now you have full visibility of the entire fashion industry and what they're doing on social media. Brands can literally reinvent themselves on a daily basis thanks to the power of social media. With this immediacy in mind, one of the most surprising things that people outside of the fashion industry may not be aware of is the length of time it takes to design and make clothing and the speed that that can be achieved. If the creative process is streamlined to the core, it is possible for brands to manufacture extraordinary product in timelines that reflect trend. It takes high quality supply chains four to eight weeks to manufacture short order basic products and 12 to 16 weeks to manufacture the most complex designs. Design timelines are equally as dynamic as long as the direction is right. Analyzing competitor brands and knowing how long it takes to design a product, it shouldn't take great designers more than one week to design a collection equivalent to the best of the best global brands. These streetwear sweat concepts epitomize the simplicity of commercial reactive design with the ability to transcend genders, age groups, and demographics. They blend a combination of high-performing modern hoodie blocks, unbelievable fabrics, and the most popular outerwear branding language in Superdry's history. When you put on an amazing hoodie and cohort joggers of this level, you get an overwhelming endorphin hit of empowerment and within a second, they become your favorite hoodie in the wardrobe. These sweats, which are purely conceptual and have no connection to Superdry, took one hour to design. As global trends have shifted so that sweat sets are now worn as a modern uniform, sweats done excellently have the ability to deliver long-term participation. Entire brands now exist because of the new sweat phenomenon, and every luxury brand has streetwear sweats as a permanence within their collections. The orange label sweat category that I designed well over a decade ago still remains as one of Superdry's sweat categories today because their appeal is timeless. Sweats are the perfect vehicle to make a brand cool with the youth and deliver powerful, easy performance. With the only requirement to tweak colour season after season, in the time it takes to drink a cup of coffee, you've created an entire season's colours. Similarly, the Superdry Wind Cheater was designed on a paper car valeting mat covered in mud after a flash of inspiration on a trail run. When I first created that design, people thought I had lost my mind. Zips everywhere, too many collars and neon embroideries all over the garment in never been seen before positions. The wind cheater went on to become one of the most defining and best performing outerwear categories of all time for super dry. I have no visibility of past performance. So if it wasn't the goat, the wind cheater and its family of variants was right up there. Now Superdry, thanks to the chameleon-like design language instilled at its inception, is one of the rare breed of brands that has almost no restriction into what product category it enters. If the product is on point and reflective of what the customer is wanting and wearing, it can go within reason pretty much anywhere it wants. That is a creatively powerful tool for any global brand. Nike cannot do leather jackets and shirts, but Superdry can do streetwear and sportwear. North Face cannot do dresses and denim, but Superdry can do puffer jackets and backpacks. Like brands such as Boss and Tommy, Superdry has the genuine ability to be Ralph Lauren to one customer and Lululemon to another. As someone with an acute awareness of competitor products, from mainstream sportswear to luxury streetwear, who scours the competition on a daily basis, I see Superdry as a brand with a culture of creativity formed on a 20-year heritage that cannot be faked or fast-tracked. And importantly, bring back the hype, but this time through social media. Back in the day, through trade shows and catwalks, we used to show everyone the future 
and bring people into the vision six months ahead of product dropping. The bond between brand and customer then was high energy and rock solid. I personally believe, like with the wholesale, Superdry needs to go back to its roots and reignite the model that made it one of the most iconic brands of an era. If Superdry can navigate the creative path to translate the same levels of design clarity from its strongest lines across its other product categories and add innovation back into the mix. There's no reason why it cannot be a 365 all products, all gender, all age group brand.